Tonight I want to focus on uh, the part of the passage, verse number, starting with verse number 22. The title of my sermon is Questions About Hell. Questions About Hell. Because a lot of people are confused about hell. They don't, uh, <clears throat> they don't understand the doctrine of hell. What hell is, where it is, uh, who goes there, if it's even real. So we're going to look at some things about hell. And first off, let's look down at... Uh, Verse number 22, it says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So first off, we can see here that the rich man died, and immediately he lift up his eyes, being in hell. And then it says, Being in torments. So hell, first off, what is hell? You know, hell is a place of punishment and a place of torments. Um, you know, and, and a lot of people will try to say that hell is like separation from God. Like just being out of God's presence, you know, a thirst for God. But the Bible's real clear that it's a place where people are tormented day and night. And if we keep going in this passage in verse 24... It says, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. The second thing we see here is that it's got fire. It's got a flame. And so there's fire in hell, literal fire, where people are burning, and he's so uh, thirsty that he just wants one drop of water. One drop. I mean, man, if I, if I was outside today so many which I was, and I was super thirsty. I'm not going to go ask somebody for one drop. Hey, can I have one drop of water? Knock on their door and be like, hey, do you have a drop of water I can have? No, I'm not going to ask for just a drop. But that's how thirsty this guy was. He just was longing for just one drop of water. That's how much torments he was in. Uh, and then in verse 25, it goes on. <clears throat> and it says, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So he continues to be in torment. And the sad thing is, this man today is still in hell. You know, And then God just gave us a picture, and he, he, he lifted up the lid on hell, you know, so to speak, and showed us what was there. And that's, that's, that's the reality. Turn with me to uh, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9 in your Bibles. <clears throat> I'm going to read a passage from uh, Deuteronomy 32. Verse 22, it says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. So that verse clearly says that God's kindling a fire, and it shall burn unto the lowest hell. So, And that's one of the main things is people will say that the fire in hell is just figurative. It's not really fire, you know. And, but... That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible is real clear that it's fire. <clears throat> I had you turn to Mark chapter 9. Look at verse number 45. Verse number 45. It says, And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Now, that right there... I mean, it's pretty clear that there's fire, it's never going to be quenched. So, I mean, it's just, it's going on forever. And then verse 46, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Again, repeat it. Verse 47, and if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye, than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. So right there, it says it's just hell fire. So, that's what it is for sure. We also can see this from... Uh, obviously, we show people in, in the Bible the lake of fire when we're out soul winning. I mean, the lake of fire, which is <clears throat> hell will be cast into the lake of fire, but it's the, the, uh, the permanent place of hell once God recreates the earth. It's another sermon in itself. But uh, <clears throat> so, so hell definitely is a place of fire. You know, everybody doesn't believe that. I have a quote here from Billy Graham, you know, the famous evangelist Billy Graham. He's not alive anymore. He's probably, you know, experiencing the true, uh, you know, hell today because he believed that 
it, anybody from every religion was saved. You know, they all were getting there by their own way. You know, well, the Bible says that, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, Billy Graham didn't know the true gospel if he thinks that everybody's going to heaven based on whatever they believe. No, that's just not the case. But this is a quote from Billy Graham. It says, talking about the fire, he says, It's symbolic. I believe the fire is a thirst for Almighty God that can never be quenched. It's symbolic. The hell, the fire in hell is symbolic. You know, and then, but other people will try to say, well, Billy Graham did preach it right sometimes. You know, sometimes he said that hell was actually really, really, really fire. Well, you know, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know, get it right. I mean, it's pretty clear in the Bible. Get it right. But, you know, people that have a double tongue, that's uh, kind of like a serpent, right? They have a split tongue. So... But uh, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, and uh, I'm going to read from Proverbs chapter 15, verse number 11. It says, Hell and destruction are before the Lord, how much more then the hearts of the children of men. So the second thing about what is hell is some people will, like I said, say that hell is separation from God. So we're going to just prove that to be false real quick, and we'll move on to my next point. But uh, 2 Thessalonians, look down. Well, actually, where I read in uh, Proverbs, it says, Hell and destruction are before the Lord. So, they're, they're before the Lord. God is, it sees it at all times. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and verse number 8, it says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction, from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Now the reason I brought you this passage, see, this is the passage that people will distort and try to say that hell is separation from God. But they clearly just don't understand what's being said in this passage. Because in verse number 9, it says, They'll be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. So the everlasting destruction there in the sentence where it's coming from is it's coming from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Because, you know, the Bible says our Lord is a consuming fire. You know? And <clears throat> so He's the one that's kindling the fire of hell. It's from His presence and from the glory of His power. The modern versions change these passages. I just why I took two popular modern versions, obviously the NIV. And I just looked up this verse. And it says, look down in your Bible, but look at what they say. It says, they will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His might. So, does it seem like they're trying to convey that, that they're just completely shut off from God? That's what it's trying to convey. But that's just not the case. The ESV, one of, one of the more popular uh, false versions of the Bible, says, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His might. So they both, they have these agendas to twist God's Word, to make it fit what they believe, to make it fit the narrative. But they're not, they're not translations, they're interpretations. These, these Bible, these, they're not Bibles. They're just interpretations of, of the Bible. And, uh, you know, so clearly that Hell is in the presence of God. It's not, it's not being away from Him. Their smoke of their torments ascendeth up forever and ever, you know, before the throne. Now, one last point on this subject is that <clears throat> hell also is often synonymous with, with death in the Bible. Uh, we, we see this where, where death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Death and hell. Turn with me to Isaiah 28. We'll look at just uh, a couple places where this is proven in the Bible. Not always, but obviously you have to get it in the context. But it is, for sure, they are, are used synonymously sometimes in the Bible. Uh, I'm going to read Proverbs 7, verse 26. It says, For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. So, it's talking about the, uh, the whorish woman and her house is the way to hell. And it says going down to the chambers of death. 
So those two uh, uh, comparisons are the way to hell and chambers of death. So they're kind of used synonymously. Isaiah 28 is a lot more clear. Verse number 18, it says, And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing skirt shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. So you see right there that death and hell can be switched around either way. Covenant with death, agreement with hell. So, and people that are in hell are referred to as the dead. That's another way to look at it. Because it says, that's what the Bible says, death and hell. You know, they gave up the dead which were in them. <clears throat> the sea and, and the, the dead came out and they stood before God in the end times. But, uh, so that's enough on that point. What is hell? Hell is, is literal fire. It's punishment. It's a torment. It's in the presence of God. And it is death. That's what it is, literally. So my second point is, where is hell? Where is hell? People are confused about this. You know, they, 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 they have a, a wrong idea about where hell is. They don't, they don't <clears throat> just, just, but if we look at it from a Bible perspective, it's very clear. So turn with me to Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. And so we're going to just use a lot of Bible because we're trying to prove doctrine here. So just be prepared to turn. Numbers chapter 16. I'm going to read Proverbs 15, 24. It says, The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. So that, that scripture there makes it clear that hell is beneath. And then look down. I had you turn to Numbers chapter 16. It's an interesting story. It's a very, very interesting story. It's a, uh, let's just read it. Verse number 29. It says, If these men die... The common death of all men, this is Moses speaking, or if they shall be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit. Pit here is synonymous with hell. That's what it's talking about. It's, hell is often referred to as the pit. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained to Korah, and all their goods. They, and all that appertaineth to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed up them, closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Yeah, so this is a very interesting story where the, the ground actually opens up and it just swallows up these men that were in rebellion against Moses and uh, they go straightway down into the pit, into hell, alive. So, and the, the verse we read before in Proverbs says that hell was beneath, right here, clearly again, that hell is being swallowed up into the earth and... We can look at clear scriptures in the New Testament. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. But these men, I mean, they, they got it immediately. They were swallowed up. And then the Lord even rained down fire and brimstone upon the ones that fled. I mean, he was in some serious anger right there. So, but I mean, how would you like to be standing on the edge of that when they're swallowed up? Whoa, don't get too close. And fall right into hell. That's crazy. Turn to, or I had you turn to Matthew chapter 12. Look down at verse number 40. It says, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And we know from Acts chapter 2, verse 31, it says that he's seen this before speaking of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. So when Jesus died, his soul descended into the lower parts of the earth <clears throat> according to Ephesians 4 and right here in Matthew 12 40 it says he was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth right heart center the core you know of the earth is where he was so he was beneath in the middle of the earth and even science itself teaches that you know the core of the earth is lava and magma how they know this well volcanoes spew out lava and magma and everything. Hell hath enlarged herself. That's what I think about when I hear about a volcano uh, erupting, you know, 
just like hell hath enlarged herself, spewing out fire and brimstone, making room for more people. It's a sad thought, but that is probably the truth. <laughs> so, so right here, Jesus Christ himself, prophesying of himself, being in the being in hell for three days and three nights. And then uh, let's turn to one last place to prove this is Isaiah 14, verse 9. Turn to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 9. So I think it's pretty clear that hell is beneath you. Not too many people are mixed up on this, this part of, uh, of hell and the doctrine of hell. But there are some people, you know. They don't think, well, obviously the ones that think it's figurative, they don't even think there's a real hell. You know, it's just some place where people's minds go or something. So hell, in Isaiah 14, <clears throat> verse 9, it says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. So this, this passage right, right there starts off, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee, talking about Satan being uh, cast into hell. And this brings me into my next uh, point is, you know, who goes to hell or who is in hell? <clears throat> because a common misconception is that, you know, the devil is in hell right now. And he's, you know, somewhat ruling and reigning in hell. People have this idea. Cartoons portray it. You know, the devil with his pitchfork ruling in hell. But, the, I mean, the older cartoons, I don't really know what they portray today. But, <clears throat> look down um, at Isaiah 14. Just just look up at verse number, or look, look, look a little further, verse number 12. <clears throat> it says, uh, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken, didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. <clears throat> so this is a prophecy of Satan being brought down to hell. But he hasn't been... been been uh, brought down to hell from uh, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says uh, be sober be vigilant for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about uh, seeking whom he may devour so the devil is walking about on this earth seeking whom he may devour if you're familiar with the story of Job uh, the devil is walking about in the earth looking for a man that he can tempt right and, and God suggests to him, Hast thou considered my servant Job? You know, and he, he even goes before God in heaven. So Satan has access back and forth between earth. You know, he said, Where, where, where have thou been? Where, where was he? I'm paraphrasing. <clears throat> but he was walking to and fro in the earth. And he came before God with the, the sons of God. Right? Mm -hmm. He was with them. So, so, so Satan still has access to heaven. One day he will be cast out of heaven. <clears throat> and so real quick, let's just turn and look at that place in the Bible, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And so, so who goes to hell or who is in hell? So Satan will eventually go to hell. It, it was created for him. In Revelation chapter 20, verse number 10, look down, it says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So <clears throat> this, Revelation chapter 20, is after the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. So, so right here we can see a timeline that Satan will not even be cast into the lake of fire until the end of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. He's brought out of that bottomless pit that he was thrown into at the beginning of the millennial reign and then <clears throat> cast into it at the end. So Satan has a long time to go before he's ever cast into that lake of fire, which is the eternal place of hell. So turn with me to Matthew chapter number 7. Matthew chapter number 7. <clears throat> so we see that 
one day Satan will be cast into hell. He's not there right now. He's not ruling and reigning in hell. It's not some big party. And some people say that they, they want to you know, reign in hell. Well, they're not going to do that. We're going to see that here in a little bit. We've already seen that from the rich man and the beggar. But Matthew chapter 7, it says in verse number 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So right here, <clears throat> these people, they're false prophets that are being, uh, you know, cast into hell. They, God never knew them, it says in verse 23. It says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. They're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And because they're trusting in their works. They're trusting in, uh, they're casting out devils, prophesying in his name, and doing many wonderful works. You know, these people are not trusting in what Jesus Christ did for them. They're trusting in whatever they did on this earth to get them to heaven. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 917, it says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. So, the wicked are going to go to hell, for sure. And then, false prophets definitely are going to go to hell. They're, they're some of the most wicked people there are. <clears throat> you know, they're, most of them are twice dead plucked up by the roots. You know, they're not, they're not, they have no hope of salvation because they're, they're uh, deceiving people into going to hell, basically. So, turn with me to Revelation chapter 21. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 21. I'm going to read uh, a quick verse from Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. It says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. So here we see <clears throat> that these men, if they want to live by their works, if they want to try to get to heaven by their works, the Bible says that these people are going to be judged according to their works. And they're already dead. You know, the sea gave up the dead. And death and hell were deliver delivered up the dead. And they're judged according to their works. So they want to be judged according to their works. Well, they will be judged according to their works. And guess what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So they're not going to get there based upon their works. You know, it's clear that, you know, the Bible says, Romans 4, 6, Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto, the, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. So righteousness is received without works. We know it's just by faith in Jesus Christ and by accepting that free gift of salvation, by calling upon His name and believing in the death, burial, and resurrection. So I had you turn to Revelation 21 and verse 8. This is, this is the verse that we quote to people out soul winning. And it says, you know, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So this this passage, this verse right here, we always show this to people just to point out that anybody that's ever sinned with, has their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. And why do we say that? Because the last thing on the list says all liars. And you can't tell me that every person that knows right from wrong in this world has has, has told they've all everybody's told a lie if you know right from wrong if you have children you know this for a fact because I don't teach my kids to lie but guess what they lie it's like I didn't teach them that it's just in the heart of man you know the heart of man is, is wicked and that's what we're we're uh, sinners you know we've all sinned and so we show people that because everybody's not a murderer or a whoremonger, or a sorcerer. But you know what? We've all lied. And then that verse makes it real clear that everybody is going to have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. But, you know, obviously we don't have to go there, but this verse proves very well that everybody deserves to go there. 
So Matthew chapter 25, verse 41 uh, says, uh, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So who goes to hell was, was the question here. We, we see that, that uh, the devil will go to hell eventually. And from this verse, we see that it was prepared for him and his angels. In the beginning, that's what it was, that was what it was prepared for, was for the devil and for his angels. You know, man, he, it wasn't intended for man to go there at all. Man goes there by his own free will, by choosing not to believe the gospel. You know, it's, it's, it's believe and not believe. You know, that's, that's the two options you have. Uh, he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the, of the only begotten Son of God. So, you know, that's the, that's the key here, is that men that don't accept the gospel, don't believe, they're the ones going to go to hell. Why? Because all men are sinners, according to Revelation 21.8. And that's who's going to go to hell. You know, it's not some, some thing where God just picks and chooses. No, it's, it's a choice that you and me both have to make. <clears throat> so, my last point, my last point on, uh, on this is, you know, is hell uh, forever, right? Is hell forever? Some people would try to argue that hell is only for uh, a certain amount of time, and then, you know, when God makes the new heaven and new earth, that it's, it's, He's going to do away with hell. But that's not the case, uh, or else there's a whole bunch of scriptures that just don't make sense. So we're going to look at some of those scriptures. Turn to uh, Revelation 14. Revelation 14. Revelation chapter 14. We're going to read chapter, or Matthew 25, 46. <clears throat> it says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting, into life eternal. So the righteous are going to go into life eternal, eternal life, and the other ones are going to go into everlasting punishment. Now, everlasting means the same if it's by life or punishment. It doesn't matter which one. When I explain everlasting life to somebody, if I'm going to explain everlasting punishment, I'm going to use it the same way, except for I'm going to say, hey, it's punishment instead of life. <laughs> you know. So people that are going to hell, it is forever. It's an everlasting punishment. I had you turn to Revelation 14. <clears throat> Verse number 9 is where we're going to look at. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And this is the verse I wanted to focus on with verse 11. It says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So right here, it's very clear that the people in hell, their smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, is what it says. And then it goes on, it says they have no rest day nor night. So they're not resting, they don't take a nap down there, they don't go to bed at night, they're just always in torment, all the time, 24-7, no rest, day or night, their smoke is in it up. They're constantly burning. The Bible said, remember, where the worm dieth not. So, <clears throat> and the fire is not quenched. So it's never quenched. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing, but we should be willing to pull people out of that fire. That's why we go out so with him. And then the last place, I'm just going to read this, is in uh, Jude, Jude 1. If you want to turn there, Jude chapter 1. And this is talking about... Uh, you know, the book of Jude is talking about the false prophets and things. But verse number 7 is the verse I want to read. It just says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So not only were they burnt with fire and brimstone on the earth and destroyed, but they also are suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So, 
they were killed with fire literally, but they're also suffering eternal fire in hell. So it's eternal fire. It's not ending. That point is pretty mute. I mean, hell is forever. Just as we're going to live on in eternity forever, these people will be burning in hell forever. And that's why you know, we should go out and try to win as many people to the Lord as we can because I don't want anybody to suffer in hell. Unless they, they, you know, they're already a reprobate. I don't care about them people at all. You know, I don't even want to talk to them. But unfortunately, we do run into them sometimes. So can't get around it. <laughs> so the conclusion of the sermon is, you know, point number one is hell is a place of punishment. You know, with fire and torments. And number two, hell is in the heart of the earth or the core of the earth. Number three, hell is filled with unsaved, or the dead as we call them. And well, one day, uh, it will include the devil also. He'll be cast into hell and his angels with him. And number four is hell lasts forever. It's for eternity. So, you know, of course, you know, me and you, the best part is me and you will never take part in any of this. We, we, but we should know the doctrine of hell so we can explain it to others. You know, so we can save them with fear, pulling them out of the fire. You know, because people need to be, be scared. You know, the hell's got are scared out of them. You know, so they can uh, be saved and have eternal life. And be in the same boat as me and you, where we don't have to fear. You know, we don't have to fear him, which, uh, fear them which kill the body. But fear him which kill both soul and body in hell. You know, God's the one that has the power to do that. We should still fear God, but guess what? We, should, we fear him as a father not as someone that's going to destroy us in hell now. Because God's never going to send us to hell. Because we're His children. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank You for this time. I thank You for this, uh, this service and everyone that showed up tonight. Lord, I just pray that they got something out of the message and that we would understand clearly the doctrine of hell. It's a real place, Lord, and there's people that are burning there today that, that would just uh, wish that we would go out and knock on their... their uh, family's door so they wouldn't come there and I, I pray that you know we would go knock on those doors you would send us to those doors the people that want to hear and that would get saved and I know that you will do that for us Lord and I pray all these things in Jesus name Amen, Amen.